Okay, let's study rectangular coordinate graphs, ordered pairs, quadrants, and axes. First of all, let's get a uh, motivation for having to use graphs in the first place, and where they use it all. Well, let's take this example. If you consider a taxi fare, which is two dollars per mile plus a three dollar base fee, right? So, um, for example, if your miles was 10, what would the fare be? Press pause, write down the answer. So if in this taxi you go 10 miles, how much will you have to pay? It's $2 per mile plus a $3 base fee. Well, let's see. $2 for every mile, you go 10 miles. Isn't that 2 times 10, 20 plus 3? $23, right? For 10 miles. Okay, so basically the fare is two times the number of miles plus three dollars, right? And we can let the fare be the output y. Okay, so the fare is y, it's the output, and the input is the number of miles. So again, the fare is two times the number of miles plus three dollars, right? So if we do an input output table, and uh, the input is zero miles to begin with. The fare will simply be two times zero plus three, which is zero plus three, three. If you go one mile, it will be two times one plus three, which is two and three, five. If you go two miles, two times two plus three, four plus three is seven, and so on. So fill in the other outputs. Press pause and fill in the other outputs. So 2 times 3 plus 3, 2 times 4 plus 3, 2 times 5 plus 3, and you should get 9, 11, 13, right? So, let's have a look at what would happen if we made a graph for this very, very, very simple taxi fare. So, um, what if we did this? Okay, do a little table over here, x is the input. Y is the output, and we went 0 miles, 1 mile, 2 miles, 3 miles, 4 miles, 5 miles, and the output was go 0 miles, $3, 1 mile, $5, 2 miles, $7, 9, 11, 30, right? Now, what we can do is plot these, um, plot each pair of, each pair of information on an axis. So if you get out some graphing paper and you might find some by the way you can get graph paper if you go to the math lab link online click on that and you'll find some graph paper to print out. So we have an X axis which is the horizontal axis. Horizontal think of the horizon. The horizon is horizontal and a y-axis, which is the vertical axis, goes up and down. Why do we put x here and y here, not the other way around? Because the whole world does it, and if we all do it the same way, then we can communicate easily to each other. So it's just standard procedure. There's no particular reason. Um, so when x is 0, y is 3, and when x is 1, y is 5, how do we put this information in a graph form? Well, first of all, we number the axes. This is the x-axis. It's a number line. It goes in this direction. And the number line goes 0, 1, 2. So each of these lines is where it's marked off. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And in this direction, it goes negative 1 negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. So go ahead and mark your axes off also. Now that's the x-axis. It's a number, it's the horizontal number line. The y-axis is another number line and the y-axis goes vertically. Okay? If we mark the y-axis off, um, it will look like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative ten. So we have labeled our axes with numbers. We have labeled our axes, right? Now, to plot these this information, we we do um, it, it, it's these this information is usually grouped in what's called an ordered pair. An ordered pair looks like this: x, comma, y, input, comma, output, and it's in parentheses. Now, this parentheses does not mean multiply; it's simply used for writing ordered pairs. So, the first ordered pair we have is zero, comma, three. Then we've got one, comma, five, two, comma, seven and 3 comma 9 and 4 comma 11 and 5 comma 13. Now answer me this. What is wrong with this, this and this? Students always forget this in Math 60. You need to have parentheses around your ordered pairs to show that they are ordered pairs. Do not forget the parentheses when you're writing them down. Okay? And you will have to do that in the test. So let's take the first ordered pair and it is x is 0, y is 3. You go to the x-axis and find 0. Where is 0 on the x-axis? Is it here? Right? Now, go upwards and put your pen on the axis like I'm doing and find 3. Where is 3 on the, on the y-axis? So go up and down on where x, x is 0 here. So go up and down and find 3. It's right here, isn't it? So this is the ordered pair 0 comma 3, right? Now we've got to plot 1 comma 5. x is 1, y is 5. Plot this ordered pair. When x is, find where x is 1. Go across along the x-axis. Where is x 1? Is it right here? And where is y 5? So go up and down the one line. The one line goes up and down like that. Look where x is 1. And you find where y is 5. And y is 5 right here. And so go across and go up. And they meet right here. Okay, Where y is 5 and x is 1. So this is 1, 5. 2, 7. x is 2. y is 7. And you go ahead and find 3, 9. Where is 3, 9? Three, nine, right here, isn't it? Okay, now the point is if I draw a straight line through these points, and I should use a ruler, and I don't see one around, but I should have a ruler and put it here, and then you draw a straight line properly through the point on graph paper and put an arrow to indicate that the line goes on forever. As the miles goes up, this line just keeps going on and on and on forever upwards. And label the line. Now, this, this input output table, x was here, and the y was, in fact, 2 times the input plus 3, if, if you recall. So we label this graph y equals 2x plus 3. Okay? And we plotted some ordered pairs. Now, let's plot some other ordered pairs for practice. So let's um, just list them off. And these have nothing to do with this line at all. Actually, before that, what we need to do is figure out why we even bothered drawing graphs. Well, it gives you a visual representation of the, of the taxi fare. X here is the number of miles. Y is the fare. Okay? So this is the miles. And Y is the fare. So... If number of miles is, say, 3, I can just go to 3, go up, 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 hit the graph, go back, 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 and that's for y is 9. So 3 miles will cost $9. If you get into this taxi cab and you ask, say to the driver, I want to go 3.5 miles, how much will it cost? He can use this graph. He can go to 3.5, which is in between 3 and 4, right here. Okay? He can go straight up, 
up, up, up, up, up, vertically up, hit the graph here, then go back to the y-axis, and it says 10. So he'll say it'll cost you $10. 3.5 miles costs $10, okay? So what would 1.5 miles cost? So find 1.5 on the miles axis, the x-axis. It's in between 1 and 2, isn't it? It's right here, isn't it? Now go vertically up and hit your graph. So vertically up, 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 up. Keep going up, keep going up. Hit the graph. And if you drew it correctly and you come back, you'll find you should be on 6. 1.5 miles costs $6. Okay? So this is why we have graphs, so we can read things from them. And it shows the entire relationship as just a straight line, which is a lot clearer than this bunch of numbers. I mean, when you visually look at a bunch of numbers, it doesn't jump out at you what exactly that means. But when you see a graph, it, you know, it's a clearer representation. Okay, so let's so you have labeled your axes and the ordered pair 2, 10, x is 2, y is 10, let's find that. Well, x is 2 right here, and you just go straight up and find where, where is y 10. y is 10 right here, isn't it? So that is 2, 10. Okay, find um, the point negative 4, 5 x is negative 4, y is 5. So go to the x-axis and find where negative 4 is. Right here, isn't it? Now go up and down and find where is y5. So you're going up and down this line here, the negative 4 line, and find out where y is 5. So if you go up like that, y is 5 right here, isn't it? And so when y is 5 and x is negative 4, they intersect right here. That's negative 4, 5, okay? How about negative 8, negative 4? Now, every point, remember, is x, comma, y. So x is negative 8, y is negative 4. So go to the x-axis and find where x is negative 8. Right here, isn't it? And then find where y is negative 4. Where is y negative 4? right here, isn't it? So when y is negative 4 and x is negative 8, that intersects right here. Negative 8, negative 4. x is negative 8, y is negative 4. Okay? Go ahead and find 5, negative um, 6. x is 5, y is negative 6. x is 5. Now, go up and down. Where is y negative 6? Is it up here or is it down here somewhere? It's down here, isn't it? Right here. y is negative 6. x is 5. y is negative 6. Right here. 5, negative 6. Okay? So, how about this? x is 0. y is 7 x is 0, y is 7. Find where x is 0. Right here, isn't it? Now find where y is 7. Right here, isn't it? So this is 0, 7. Okay? Find 0, negative 8. x is 0, y is negative 8. Press pause and find it. Zero, negative eight. Find um, six, zero. X is six, Y is zero. So you've got to find where X is six. That's the first step. Find where X is six. Is X six over here? Or is it over here? Where is X the number six? Is it right here? Now, where is y0? If you look at the y-axis, go up and down here, where is y0? 
It is right here, isn't it? Now, if you go across, they intersect exactly here on the x-axis itself. This is 6, 0, right? Now find negative 6, 0. x is negative 6, y is 0. So find for x is negative 6 and find for y is 0. Press pause if you need to. And it's right here. X is negative 6, Y is 0. These are the ones that people get confused on, the ones on the axis for some reason. Find where X is 0 and Y is negative 4. <coughs> <coughs> if you go to the X axis and find 0, that's right here. Now find where the y is negative 4. So x is 0. Now where is the y negative 4? Go up and down here and find negative 4. It's right here, isn't it? So this is 0, negative 4. Okay. Now find the point 0, 0. These are called points and they're sometimes called ordered pairs. Ordered pairs are points. The points on the graph. So where is 0, 0? x is 0, y is 0. Well, x is 0, y is 0. It's right here in the middle, isn't it? 0, 0. And 0, 0 is called the origin. O-R-I-G-I-N. The origin. Okay. Now, if you take this quarter part of it here, this is called quadrant one. So this this where, where um, the x's are positives and the y are positives. So the x's are positives and the y are, y's are positives, right? Um, if you take this quarter part here, this is called quadrant two. Quadrant two happens when the x values are positive or negative negative aren't they? And the y values are positive. Quadrant 3, are the x's positive or negative and are the y's positive or negative? The x values are negative, the y values are negative, right? And here, this area here, this quarter, is called quadrant 4. Are the x values positive or negative? Are the y values positive or negative? The x values are positive. The y values are negative. So quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. Why does it start here and go around in this direction? It seems it should start here and go in this direction. So why is it Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4? In that direction. Again, no particular reason. Just because it's like that all over the world and we all do it so we can communicate with each other. So when somebody in China says quadrant two, then we know that's quadrant two, not down here. That's all. So a lot of things in math is just a matter of learning a language. It's not uh, intelligence at all. It doesn't require any IQ. It's just a matter of remembering, you know, the different uh, terminology and vocabulary and everything else. Okay.